Hey, what's up, guys? Got a super special mesh system today. The new Netgear Orbi Wi-Fi 7 quad band mesh system. Yes, Wi-Fi 7. I will be doing my speed test range test using my Wi-Fi 7 device, which is my OnePlus 11 5G. And I'll also use my regular Galaxy S23 Ultra, which supports Wi-Fi 60, just to see some speed differences. I've also ordered the Pixel 8 Pro, which supports Wi-Fi 7. So I'll run some numbers with that, assuming I get that in time. So this thing is crazy high tech. It has a lot of crazy stuff. But the important things to note are that each of the channels, so there are four channels, there's a 6 gigahertz, 2 5 gigahertz, and a 2.4 gigahertz, and each of the channels supports up to 4x4 MoMIMO, which is kind of what you want because that can actually support even faster speeds because some of the other routers are actually just 2x2. Two two. So that is something that is good. We have some crazy fast ports. We'll talk about it when we're unboxing. And it does come with one year of Netgear armor included in the price. If you guys just wanna see what the box looks like, there's basically a whole bunch of stuff. It, it's This thing is supposed to be one of the best mesh systems out there. It's, it's crazy fast. It's supposed to dethrone the RBKE963, which I've reviewed, which is Netgear's Wi-Fi 6E system, which is probably the best Wi-Fi 6E system out there. And yeah, so a whole bunch of stuff. We got a nice looking box. It's beefy it's heavy let's just go ahead and unbox this thing i'm honestly genuinely very very uh very very excited to be um just really testing this thing because wi-fi 7 is is crazy so we got some uh quick startup just uh, telling you a few things sync button reset button the ports and stuff like that so let's see we got some power plugs i imagine in here so we got some instructions, neck gear armor. And again, it's included for free uh, for the first year, but does require a subscription after that, uh, should you choose to get their neck gear armor. So nothing here. We got some power ports right here, and I'm assuming we're gonna have an ethernet cable. Um, so this is 100 to 120 volts, and the output is 60 watts. This is what the plug looks like. So our AC to DC. There it is. And we got essentially three of those, obviously, one for each. And we have a, does it tell us what it is? We have an ethernet cable, obviously, but it is CAT6. So just as a heads up. All right, let's look at the mesh system itself. So the Orbi comes with one router and two satellites. So this is going to be the main one that's hooked up to your modem or your ONT or your DSL or whatever your internet source is. It comes with a sticker that has a predefined SSID that I'm just hiding. This is the shape of it. And we have all the ports here. So let's take a closer look at this. We have a sync button, we have a factory reset. We have four ethernet ports that supports up to 2.5 gigabits each. We have another LAN for a 10 gig port and our WAN, which is our internet source, has also supports 10 gigs and we have the power port right here. So the router and the satellites all have pretty much the same shape except the satellites have less ports. There's also some info right here about this router that I'm hiding and it looks like there are two screw holes so I'm not sure what that's for, if, if you can attach that to something and stick it on, I'm not sure. Uh, but that's what the bottom looks like. Granted, that's not something I plan on using. I'm just gonna place this like I normally do with all my mesh systems. So this is pretty much a shape. If we wanted to do a quick comparison between this and the 6C, it's about the same height. Um, obviously, more of a triangle shape. So overall, it's prop, yeah, overall, I mean, it is bigger. If we look at it, this one is, you know, yeah, overall, I think this new one is bigger. It's about the same weight, I would say. I mean, both of these are beefy routers. So just to give you guys a frame of reference, I have the PX50, which I just finished reviewing right now. I'm getting ready for that video. But this is basically, a, just so you guys could see the difference. I mean, this thing is massive. You could prop, it's almost as tall as two of these PX50s. The satellites are both exactly the same, so we'll just concentrate on one of them. So we have a sync button here, a factory reset. We have two, two and a half gigabit ports, and we have a 10 gig port. So you could actually get a full wired backhaul of 10 gig, assuming you use either CAT 6A or CAT 7 or CAT 8 uh, ethernet cable. And we have our power port and the same kind of deal, same exact shape. So I ran the Orbi for about two weeks as my main mesh system and first impressions were it's crazy fast. In fact, so fast, 
I did a separate video with my Mac Mini with a 10 gig card hooked up to a wireless backhaul node just to demo how fast it actually is even over wireless backhaul which is insane. Links below if you guys are interested. Now, in those two weeks something surprising happened where it actually dropped a connection a couple times. Now the first time it happened I restarted the system, I checked my ONT which is basically a modem for people that have fiber optic, ONT standing for optical network terminal. Uh, but ONT has been stable this whole time so I'm like okay it's most likely not that. Restarted this, problem came back two or three days after, did a drop again. Now it did fix itself after the drop but it just kind of surprised me. So I did some digging online, long story short there's two options. Number one is there's an option for enable 20 to 40 megahertz coexistence so someone recommended disabling that so I did that and I also noticed that the MTU was set to something above 1500, it was set to 1508 or something like that. So I actually changed it to 1500. There is a formula to do to find out what your MTU is. Uh, so for me that is 1500, so I set it to 1500. After that, there were no more drops. However, you know, I ran it for a, a little over a week after that. It was so far so good. So hopefully that was the problem. If it isn't, hopefully there's a firmware update to address the issue. In those two weeks I had a chance to do all my speed test range tests, have all those numbers right here. So let's jump straight in, starting with the internet speed test. Now, no matter how fast your mesh system is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, assuming the router can go that fast, which this one certainly can with this 10 gig port. So my internet speeds are five gigs up and down, gigabits per second. With an ethernet connected computer, get those full speeds. Even with an ethernet connected computer over wireless backhaul, I almost get those full speeds. In fact, I get a full download speed, but around half of that for the upload speed. Again, I demoed this in the other video. Now with the Wi-Fi devices with my OnePlus, got crazy fast speeds for a phone. Well, which is kind of absurd. And I also got very fast speeds with the Wi-Fi 60. Uh, again, nowhere near as fast as Wi-Fi 7, but still very fast. Now to find the true performance of this mesh system, I do a local speed test server. So I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer, isolating the router. And in the case of wired and wireless backhaul, I go from Wi-Fi device to the secondary one, which then jumps to the primary one, which then goes to the server. So this way I am pretty much not relying on my ISP nor the public speed test server. So looking at these numbers for the single router configuration, got some very good speeds overall. Uh, there is an improvement over the internet speed test, but just phenomenal speeds is pretty much what you would expect, both for Wi-Fi 7 and Wi-Fi 6C. The same is true for the wired backhaul. Now because this thing has two 10 gig ports, I can actually wire it to the other guy and this guy accepts it as 10 gigs so again crazy fast speeds pretty much almost identical to the single router which is what I would expect and looking at the wireless backhaul numbers this one also did very well not quite as well as the wired backhaul but still very very good for something you can get on your phone which is kind of absurd again both for Wi-Fi 7 and Wi-Fi 6E. Next we get into range test now range will vary vastly by location, if you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers around, all of this stuff can negatively impact your range. So essentially, the more obstructions there are, the less your range will be. The less obstructions, the more your range will be. Now starting with this Orbi, moving forward, I'm going to cap my range test to 100 feet. The reason for this is most of my videos get viewed on mobile devices and when I look at my videos and I look at the range test all the graphs are very very tiny it's hard to see the numbers so I want to do a simplified approach just to guys just to get the point across that will this work in my front yard will this work in my backyard and that's kind of the whole point of range test so this thing can go a lot further than 100 feet however I will be capping it to 100 feet now at 20 feet away inside my place there is hardly a drop at 50 feet. This is with me outside. Obviously, there is a much bigger drop, but still absurdly fast speeds. And even across the street at 100 feet away, still very, very fast, very usable. Now, for setup and configuration, you use the Orbi app, which is available both on iOS and on Android. Super easy to set up. Tells you what to connect where. Then you pick a Wi-Fi name and password. If you pick the same Wi-Fi name and password as the router you're replacing, your devices should automatically connect to this one. Now, it's very important to note that both your Wi-Fi name or SSID and your password are both case 
sensitive. So if you do that, your devices should connect to this, you should be good. You can obviously also pick a new one, but you would have to go to your devices and then um, tell it to connect to the new uh, Wi-Fi name. Now, once setup is complete, the Orbia app itself is a very simplified app. It pretty much gives you very limited options. The most important ones, Wi-Fi name, guest Wi-Fi, you could do internet speed test, you could do a firmware update, and there's a couple other things there. Now, if you want to tinker with the settings, you need to use a browser and go to orbilogin.com on a device that is connected to the same network. So when you go here, way more options. You can even set up one aggregation. You can set up a separate IoT network. You can you know, change your MTU size, which is what I did. You can set up your DHCP. You can update your firmware. Well, you can do that with the app as well. You can set up the router to run in access point mode if you want to. You can set up VPN. Basically, there are a lot more options if you go here. Now, when you go to the Wi-Fi settings, I didn't see a separate option for the 6 gigahertz band, and I didn't see a separate option for MLO to enable that or not. So everything is pretty much done automatically. So when it detects a Wi-Fi 7 device, it just uses MLO, which is how I got these crazy fast speeds to begin with. Now to summarize, this thing is really and honestly a beast of a mesh system. Crazy fast Wi-Fi speeds, crazy fast wired. I mean, you have the 10 gig ports, crazy, crazy fast wired speeds, very good range. I mean, something you would expect from a premium Orbi system. But let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. Do you guys have this thing? What speeds are you guys getting? And what did you get this for? What kind of internet speeds do you guys have? Let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.